All right, you did read the title right. Um, you're probably thinking, this guy, like, he just is trying to teach me how to, what, first read and write, and now he's trying to teach me how to learn. Like, excuse me, is this grade school? Yes, this is grade school because a lot of us somehow can retain basic information and knowledge or we're too lazy to apply the basic information and knowledge that we gained from a grade school level when we were like literally four, five, six years old or just the, um, or just throughout different uh, parts of our life, right? So I'll be going over like some bullet points and stuff like that that I've written down in regards to the school system, what we can kind of take away from the school system, what is practical information that we can keep and retain and just other ways and other avenues as to how we can actually learn right so getting into it i start off with the school system so here i take down the usual just things about the school system right it's for the most part boring unengaging if you have any type of like Western school system, I know the school systems in different parts of the world are completely different and they're probably more engaging. And that's why they have just, you know, a lot more um, smarter students and a lot more smarter youth, right? And they'll probably like completely take over the world within the next 40 years or so. And Western countries like the UK or America were probably like completely screwed. But if you're a youth watching this video, you know, you're taking advantage of that and you're going to apply, try and apply the knowledge that I have. So take out your notebook and paper. So getting right into it, we started with the school system, right? So again, the school system, it may not be very practical because you're sat there in your little chair for eight plus hours out of the day and then you're listening to your teacher blabble on and your teachers probably your, your teacher probably got high before they came into work right they probably took some aspirin and some tylenol just to deal with y'all rowdy little kids and then they're gonna go out right after school probably go to some club or something right or go on a date with like some sleazy guy or whatever or girl or you know whoever your teacher is right now there are some teachers who can make the classroom more engaging and they go against the grain and they go against the curriculum and you can actually learn something i've learned the most to be honest from from teachers who were basically like the complete opposite of like what would be expected of them when it comes to the teaching curriculum with um the school environment it can be pretty distracting you have friends you have girls, right? You might be distracted by girls, of course. Your friends are going to be in the back of class, you know, kikling and cackling. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, like you're going to have some kid that's like going off in the background, like about whatever little thing that they're doing. And then you're more distracted by that. And then the teacher has to constantly be like, hey, hey, you back there. Hey, stop that. Stop. Hey, stop that. Right? Like, so it's just something that isn't really conducive to a proper learning experiences experience and even colleges even college can kind of um have fault to this right you can have lecture classes like go on for hours and hours and it's like it's just like prerequisite stuff that you don't even necessarily need for your major um another thing like with school um the, the information most of most of like literally most of the information that we learn is not practical um not especially past like grade school and like maybe some of middle school everything else isn't really practical now i know in uh new curriculums they're teaching like finance and stuff like that that stuff is very important but again like uh, how the system is set up it's not engaging it's not interesting it's not fun to learn it's not something that you want to sit down and like actually do right because you're what 16 years old 17 years old you have no interest in finances whatsoever you probably work at some mcdonald's and like you work minimum wage and you spend your money on jeans and, and um iphone chargers and cases or whatever right another thing about school is with that you know impractical information we will tend to just retain it for however long we need to until we need to take whatever ways on that information or whatever test on that information that can be of course for the whole school year or term or um, semester whatever the case may be 
and we only keep that information in for X amount of time and then put it out all out on the test and then that's it, right? That's why school is so easy for some people because they know they can they can just learn the information and they can just forget it, right? And they can do the same thing over and over again until they graduate and you can graduate with like a 3.0 GPA. And then we have so many access to um, ways we can just have information, our phones, right? Uh, what's in your pocket, what you're probably watching this video on. You have so much access to information 24 seven. So what stops you from just like literally cheating on your on your math homework or on your test or whatever the case may be, right? Um, especially if it's like, you know, you're not technically passionate about mathematics or all the intricate parts of like English language arts or social studies or whatever the case may be. So you're gonna tend to just cheat on it. You're not gonna retain that information. And if you are, you're retaining it for like, you know, X amount of time until you have to take whatever quiz or test and then it's right out of your head and you don't even remember what the Pythagorean theorem is, right? But there are aspects that we can take from school. So with the whole kind of like block in your day to where you're stuck there and you're learning for X amount of time, right? You're taking in information and you're taking notes and you're doing all this, right? Um, you're highlighting things. That is very useful if you spend let's say two hours out of your day, maybe just an hour out of your day, right? Of dedicating yourself to learning a new skill or, you know, um, not one skill like every day, but like one skill and then practicing and perfecting that skill every time for an hour every day, right? So you would learn something for about an hour and then you would take notes about it and things like that. And again, with school and note taking, that's another thing that we can take away from school. That's also very important, right? Having pen and paper. Um, like, again, I've mentioned in a video before, if you have a notebook and pen, that is gonna help you out so much more than just trying to take notes on your iPad. Honestly, bro, in college, in school, people take notes on their iPad, on their MacBook, or whatever laptop device they're doing. And it's just like, bro, they're over here like click, kick, kicking and clacking or whatever. Like, and it's like, first off, how are you typing that fast? And then second off, are you looking back at those? Let's be so for real. And then most of the time, if people who take notes through um, digital means, they're probably gonna go back and write it down somewhere else and just typing it out is gonna be like just a way to kind of quickly jot it down. So don't be fooled by people who take digital notes, right? And they can uh, learn and retain information. This, they're not getting the same kind of feedback response. And at the same time, they're probably going back and looking at the lecture that the teacher posted up on whatever, like, you know, online curriculum area where you can see all of your assignments and, and all of the PowerPoints that were, you know, in class, right? Um, and that's another way to to also just go through the learning process by by taking aspects of school that are effective, right? Because you still have to retain that information. You still took notes, um, and then you applied it through you know either a test or a homework or whatever type of standardized um, you know tests and stuff like that, right? So with other things that we can take from school, book reading, right? So we have this usual thing where we will have textbooks and the teacher will kind of assign for us to take certain chapters, read those chapters, and then do like a little review quiz that's sometimes at the end of these chapters. And this is supposed to just be a way for us to retain that information and see how we kind of just learned it with what with the information that we just read now i've mentioned in my previous video about books right so i have a, a video about journaling books and then now i have this one about learning right so with books you can do the same thing right it might not be a textbook it, it could just be a general book on how to start a business or just self-help or self-improvement you can take notes on those right it's if, especially if you got your own physical copy underline stuff, annotate stuff, highlight stuff. You can write little notes inside the book if you want. It's your own physical copy that you own and you can just do whatever you want with it. And then 
keep like a little separate notebook or keep um, just an actual regular notebook off to the side and use that in order to learn from the subjects or the contents within a given book, right? So I want to kind of talk about the that dichotomy in a way of long, long form and short form content. If we think about school, you, you know, there's the us sitting in class for eight hours or however the case may be, seven, eight hours, and we're sitting there and then the teacher is blabbling on about, you know, whatever the case may be. And what happens is is that we're set there and our attention span is, I mean, a young child's attention span isn't that great. But as you get older, like let's say you're in college, right, and you're in a two-hour lecture, you're probably going to be able to listen to the two-hour lecture because for one, you're paying for that class, and two, you're an adult, and you should be able to have that attention span to be attentive, right? But most of us don't, and we're going to opt. When we are learning something new on our own, we're going to opt to click on, like, you know, the first short video or some six-minute, three-minute video that's super highly edited with all these graphics and stuff like that flying in and across screens. The person who made that video made it with the intention to get your attention and just to basically get the watch time and the view. They weren't really making it to learn to, for it to be a learning experience. Otherwise, it wouldn't be so saturated. It wouldn't be so hyperactive like that. It, it, I believe that to learn content on the internet, so basically just you know watching YouTube videos through watching YouTube videos, that's how I learned a, a good amount of stuff. Watch long videos, 20 minutes plus, hours, two hours, three hours, right? Some of the best video tutorials on how to draw, how to do mathematical equations, how to do all these other things, how to start up a business, they're like an hour long. <clears throat> they're hours long they're two three hours long when i first started out drawing i would watch i mean of course i would watch like these six minute short little tutorials and stuff like that highly edited videos and stuff like that but i would end up getting stumbling upon three hour long videos and i would watch them all the way through multiple three hour long videos whether it be posted by the same creator or multiple creators and this is where I was able to apply so much more knowledge because they were going completely in depth. And it was even kind of a follow along because I was watching them draw live. And then I would also draw at the same time, going back and rewinding these part, parts of the videos and stuff like that and writing down little notes in my sketchbooks. And that's how I would say I became pretty proficient. Now, I'm not drawing as much as I used to. I'm definitely going to try and get back into it. But I've, I've definitely learned a lot from just these people who post these long videos. If you think of all the times you might have tried to learn some type of mathematic equation for a test for school or get a recap, it's going to be these like pretty long uh, unedited videos that will um, go for stretches of amounts of time and are just basic screen recordings of someone recording their screen, writing out um, like the whole equation on a stylus and whatever and recording it. It could have been a recording from their actual class session and they're just putting it up on YouTube, right? And those are going to be the most beneficial, right? Although they're similar to how the school curriculum is where you sit down and you, you know, just listen to a teacher blabble. But now you're not surrounded by whatever distractions that a classroom environment will have, such as the pretty pictures and the graphics that a teacher will kind of um, put up over their walls, the cute girl sitting next to you, um, your friend over here trying to spit a joke every five minutes and maybe even the teacher, maybe you even think your teacher is hot or something like that. And that's also a distraction for you, right? But now you don't have that distraction when you're just you, a screen, and then in your own room and a notebook and paper, right? So how to take notes? You might be thinking like, well, duh, just write down what's important or whatever the case may be. Basically, basically, write down what information you, what seem to be emphasized within the video, write down whatever information that you kind of learned, that you learned in that moment that is basically new to you. Whatever subject that you're learning about, 
you probably already know a good amount about it because otherwise you wouldn't be searching into it or looking into it. You probably know some type of baseline information. And in that video or whatever content that you're consuming to learn from, and you hear something or you learn something that is like completely new and it just makes so much sense, that's gonna be very important, right? So write something like that down, keep it down, annotate it, analyze it, try and break down what you think they really meant by that or how you can apply that in real life. And then bingo, you're, you're, you're pretty set, right? But don't just do this for, you know, one or two moments of a video, especially if you're gonna be watching a one hour long video, 20 minutes maybe at the very least, you're going to want to really go back and rewind and rewatch certain moments. You might have to watch that video over and over again, especially if whatever you're learning is going to have to take some type of leap into the real world to where you're gonna have to actually apply it, right? Some of the smartest people on planet Earth that have ever existed or exist now, they've gotten a lot of their information from books, a lot of their information from people who are willing to sit them down and um, teach them whatever subject or information for hours and hours on end. Think of people like Nikola Tesla, people like Albert Einstein, and then we have like modern day people like you can even say like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, you can even say Kanye West, right? These people set themselves in their rooms for hours on end practicing, honing in, and learning their craft every day. They weren't just doing it two, three days out of the week. They weren't just doing it Monday through Friday, and then they took the weekends off to hang out with their... No, every single day they did this because they had a passion for, for wanting to learn and to expand their knowledge in whatever subjects they wanted to, um, to master. And this is the most important thing about learning. You have to care about what it is that you are learning about that you are trying to teach yourself about that way you could actually gain a proper learning experience from that information this step this last part is the most important part about learning and that's applying the information you you can't just take in information say you've learned and then not readjust and recorrect your lifestyle choices and say, I learned a new thing. No, you didn't. Because how can you know if you learn a new thing if you haven't tried out what you just learned, right? Now, of course, we can learn calculus and all this other bullshit in school. But what is it gonna do for you? You might as well have not learned anything in that situation because this information that you just took in, that you just consumed, is not helping you out whatsoever to make more business meetings, to make more calls, to put towards your YouTube channel, to put towards more creative aspects in your life, right? It's not helping you do anything. It's not helping you get a girlfriend. It's not helping you make more friends. It's not helping you um, attain certain relationships that can benefit you and that other person, right? So drop what is not useful and then take what is useful and apply that, apply that and try and apply it to just about your everyday life, right? When you are applying, right, you're doing, you're in the application process of whatever it is they just learned. When you're applying that knowledge to the real world, you're going to make mistakes. Even if you took, even if you think you took thorough notes, you're going to make mistakes, right? You're going to make some flops. You're going to make some errors. You're going to, just in general, you're going to be human. And you're going to just do all the things that humans do, that we humans do. And you're not going to do things right, especially on your first time, right? Unless lightning strikes or unless you really practice it. And so, of course, you're going to want to re reapply um, and try and correct for mistakes um, and then relearn. Maybe what you learned was complete bullshit and you might have to relearn again. You might have to go and find a different source and relearn information you're going to have to maybe go back to the same video, watch it over again, see if there's anything that you missed or anything that you looked over. And then after that, you start all over again, right? You're getting back into the learning process and you start all over again. And you never want to stop learning, right? Learning is something that's so important. Again, some of the smartest people ever, to all the way till their death, 
was they were always learning. They were all, they just had a thirst for, for knowledge, right? They can never be satiated, right? The more they wanted to learn, the better they got at anything that they did, right? And the more they learned, the more kind of stupider they felt because there's so much more that they had, that they could have had access to, right? And many people get complacent with what it is that they know and the knowledge that they take in. People who have higher management positions, stuff like that, they get complacent because they think they know everything they there is to know about whatever subject or whatever curriculum or whatever job that they're doing. And they don't tend to learn. They don't tend to pick up more stuff. People who see themselves as a disciple or a student for their whole lives, they tend to go a lot further, especially, again, especially if you're still going out into the real world and applying whatever information you learned. That way you can actually gain practice, right? That's what practical knowledge is, right? You have to be able to take this knowledge and practice in the real world and see how it works. And if it doesn't work or if it works, you can grow and learn from it and then further apply more skills and learn more skills and stuff like that. And you're going to go a lot further in whatever business or career you're going to be doing if you're always learning about that task at hand, right? Don't just become the successful manager or business uh, CEO or entrepreneur who makes like 10K a month and then that's all you're going to do. That's all you're, you're just going to stay there. No, work harder than that. Get even higher up than that, you know? Who says you can't strive further? Don't become complacent, you know? Stay competitive, keep in that competitive spirit, you know, competing with yourself, right? You're, you are your own enemy and you have to be able to outgrow your past self and your past thoughts and your past behaviors and you'll set yourself far above anybody else if you're always striving to learn and gather new information. I've graduated high school, I'm currently in college. Whilst I'm in college, I'm still trying to learn other things outside of what it is that I'm learning because I just love and enjoy just being able to take in information that I find to be useful to me and practical to me and being able to apply it in the world and see how it actually makes a change on my surroundings, people around me, and of course, myself, right? It's just an amazing ex experience to have. Um, you know, and again, you have to search out for the information, the good quality information. Don't just watch a YouTube short that says, oh, top 10 things you need to know about business management. Top 10 things you need to know about making a YouTube channel. This is all the things you need to know about blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, you're watching a six minute video, video highly edited. Um, you know, it's really there to just to get your view and to get views, right? You want to kind of like watch like those videos that are in like the um, hidden corner of, corner of the internet where they're like 50 minutes long, 45 minutes long, 10K views posted 10 years ago. But if you actually apply that information, hell, if you look at the comments, people are going to tell you like this is better than 99% of the information on the internet, right? So again, kind of turn on your bullshit meter, see what's real, see what's fake. Take in the information that is actually going to be practical. Apply it in your everyday life. Readjust, relearn things, go over it, take notes. Take a notebook, take notes, write stuff down, right? If you wanna learn a new language, there's literally hour long videos on the internet. That's just an example. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace out.